Oh, we have we have officially been live for five <laughs> seconds. All right. So I am going to I'm going to bring up. Well, anyway, let's just dive into this. OK, All right, let's do so it. everybody out there in the digital landscape. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is my first TriCast. I guess you I guess you call it. We're doing LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live and also Clubhouse all at the same time. And this session is called LinkedIn. I mean, copywriting that doesn't suck and makes money. My guest today is James Lorraine. He has a series right. that he's been doing on LinkedIn called LinkedIn Ad Rewrites that I think is brilliant. And, uh, you know, if you're in Clubhouse, my friend Brian Masseri is up on stage right now. And it's actually his fault that all this is happening because he's the one who put me on to James's content. So James, why don't you just give a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, I am probably the least qualified of anybody to do anything uh, is usually how I introduce myself. So I actually went to school for electrical engineering uh, and quickly realized that was not the life for me. And I think so much of us, we were just talking about this backstage. Uh, so many of us go through this past experience and then we end up in places that we never imagined. And what I've found is it's brilliant because we bring forth all these experiences that we had before. So electrical engineering was not my spirit animal uh, that I thought it was going to be, but it's equipped me so well for kind of bending that into what I love, which is consumer psychology and kind of bringing that tech piece with it. So nice. Uh, yeah. And, and so just to give some pe people some frame of reference, I decided to do this live stream because of one particular piece of content. Now, if you've been following oh. me for any length of time, you know that I'm a video guy and like, I'm fascinated with copywriting because I suck at it, which is <laughs> why I want to learn about copywriting that doesn't suck and can make money. Right. Um, and so I'm going to bring up this window. That was the one, eh? Yeah. So this is his post, and I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it better. Um, let me go over to this window. Uh, whoop, wrong way. Whoa. All <laughs> right. So it says, how do you define success on LinkedIn? One, post about my kids busting in on a Zoom call. Views, 118,000 likes, 1,700 comments, 294. Two, videos showing a LinkedIn ad teardown analysis and rewrite. Views, 1,063. Likes, 101. Comments, 77. Inbound calls, four. Inbound calls closing in the next two weeks, three. Revenue, check. There's a reason why they're called vanity, vanity metrics. What are you chasing? That I got was a lot un... of hate for that. Oh, how could you get hate, hate for that? that? How could you get because hate for that? That's there, brilliant. That is brilliant. There are, a lot of people, there are a lot of people who say you won't get the revenue. You don't get the revenue without the exposure. But they took it as if I'm saying there's only one way of doing things. Which I'm, oh, not. Okay. I'm saying they both I, have I, their value. They both have their value. Right. But, yeah. but, to me, but here's what was so powerful to me. Um, and, and especially and here's and the other reason why I was fascinated with this post in particular is because you're the copywriting guy, but you did a video about copywriting super yeah, meta yeah. and it got yeah. you four leads yeah. and three are closing. That's yeah. amazing. So, huh? so being the being the the copywriting guy, why don't you explain to me a little bit the logic of why you decided to do a video to yep. you know explain that? Yep. No, I get you, and that's something that I wouldn't have picked up. So that's cool. What the value that you saw in it. So all the best things I think that I've done have come from other people's suggestions. So being sensitive to listening to that. So for that exact example. Uh, LinkedIn gives you 1300 characters. That's it. So when I try to do an ad rewrite, there's a few blocks in there that I have. I have to have what my rewrite is and I have to have what their current copy was. And then I have to have, uh, you know, just the tags at the bottom. So what do you put in the space and the filler in between? Well, I try to educate people. Here was the old one. Here's what doesn't work about it. Here's what I like about, you know, here's the avenue I'd take it. Here's the logic behind it. And then here's the rewrite. But the problem is in 1300 characters, you don't get a lot of space to do that. So people were asking for, they've actually asked me to make a Patreon and stuff, but they're asking me to make a video breakdown where I could squeeze some more words in uh, and show my logic behind it. So in the video breakdowns, I still do the same thing, but I show my process 
I teach, I educate, you know, okay, we're going to go to the website. What does this mean? We're going to go to the profile. Who are they trying to talk to and all that stuff and then pull it together. And then at the end, I show, I show the rewrite. So I found that people really appreciate like people from all walks and all industries have really appreciated seeing that process play out. And I mean, the video lets me do it so much better than trying to just squeeze it all into a 1300 character text. Awesome. And I'm going to bring in the screen again, and we're going to look at the actual ad that you rewrote. And it's a, in the original copy was this. Are you able to optimize your operations and meet retailer requirements for direct to consumer command? This, oh, that that direct to consumer demand. Like, oh, it hurts. yeah, it's pretty boring, right? And you were also talking about letter you know, letters per word in that you focus on the letters per the average letters per word in one of your ads as like a metric as to whether, you know, you're, you're communicating in a, in a, in a really, I guess, uh, human way instead of, you know, corporate speak. And yep. here's what you, here's what you read. And the letters per word for that copy was 6.17 letters per word. Now here's what you rewrote. The e-commerce boom is about to bust your shipping department. Stores that didn't adapt to e-commerce fast enough didn't make it past 2020. Those who can't meet the rising expectations of direct-to-consumer shipping won't see 2022. Switch to an ERP built for DTC. Your survival depends on it. Like, I mean, that's kind of dramatic, but I, I'm here <laughs> for it, man. I'm here for it. I do it, dramatic. Bro. That's what I do. Yeah, and that word count you had at the bottom was 4.73. So my goal is like 4.5 would be like my ideal. I, you end up anywhere, you know, between four and a half and five is good. So, so I found, yeah, I was oh, going to real quick. I found it's not the length of copy. A lot of people complain about the length of copy, but even the old copywriting great said long copy wins. Uh, think of your copy like a salesperson in a room. You wouldn't limit that salesperson. If he's got that interested prospect, you'd let him say what he needs to say. So I am not opposed to a longer copy, but generally a good indicator is if your word count, your letters per word are really high, you're using more abstract words that aren't conversational. People will read as much as they're interested in. You just have to keep them interested. Right. That is awesome, man. And uh... What was I going to say next? What was I going to say next? I oh, I'm sorry. No, I threw you off. No, it's all good. But okay, so ex explain to me a little bit more your your whole process. You know, when when so let's not say rewriting an ad. Say mm -hmm. you're doing an original ad or website copy whatever it is mm -hmm. for a client. Like what's the first thing that crosses your mind or what's the the most important thing that you think about when you sit down to start writing that copy? customer perspective. Okay. So typically the reason why I get involved and I love this because if I get a good client, they understand this is they'll tell me we, we are here and we speak our own language. We drink our own Kool-Aid. We know ourselves too well. So therefore we need some external help. Somebody who doesn't know our product, somebody who's seeing it with fresh eyes, who can kind of take a look at it. So one of the hardest things I think to do is to keep yourself in that freshness. I mean, if you work at a company and you live and breathe it, that ad you read has, you know, ERP, has DTC, it has acronyms in it, right? Do people know what those acronyms are? Sometimes they're a good weeder method. So you don't want people who don't understand what the acronyms are, all that. So for me, it's really important to think what, like, what do you actually sell? What are you trying to do? What is the desired action? And what is your customer? Like, do they know they have a problem? What language do they use? And it's kind of staying inside the customer's head when you're writing that ad. So you're thinking, would this actually appeal to someone? I know that sounds really simple and basic, but it, a lot of ads don't. <laughs> gotcha. And um, <laughs> how, so we, when you're doing all that, when, you, when you're done, like how, how do you know you're done? How do you know that oh, you man. hit the mark? Did you see that? So there is a, there is a quote. Uh, it says like the, uh, I'm going to botch it, but it's like the skill of an artist is knowing when to stop. Okay. Like all art is knowing when to stop. I think that's the quote. It's a beautiful quote. And I actually like like Jackson Pollock's and abstract paintings. And to me, it's amazing because you're like, why did they stop right there? Like, why did they 
You know, like, why is that splash of paint there? So the funny thing is, I feel like I'm never done. I feel like after I rewrite a website or do something like that, if I go read it a month later, there's always something I would change. So the point is, when you hit that critical mass point uh, of, I feel like it's understandable, I feel like it gets the point across, I feel like it's dramatic enough and would hold people. Uh, very often, I will show it to other people who are out of industry or don't understand anything about it, or some people who are like the target market and get their thoughts on it before I launch. It depends. For the ad rewrites, just because I've been trying to crank them out one a day-ish, uh, I don't have time to go through all these extra checks and balances. But when it comes to, uh, I just, I'm working on a website rewrite now that's getting reviewed tomorrow. Um, that one I showed people who are totally unskilled because it's for business influences to understand uh, something in technology. So I could show it to almost anybody and have them read through and be like, do you understand the impact and the importance of this? So Awesome. Awesome. Give me just one moment here because it seems like for some reason uh -oh. LinkedIn is not cooperating with us. So I'm going oh, no. to post. A, yeah, for like my my stream monitor is telling me that the information is being sent to LinkedIn, but I can't find it on LinkedIn. So I'm going to oh, take man. a second and post up the YouTube stream to LinkedIn. We are live. Oh man, that's sad. Yeah, I mean I don't know what's going on. LinkedIn is disappointing me today. Uh, it wasn't worse than what was it two days ago when everything kind of fell apart? For some reason LinkedIn Live is giving me trouble. Okay. See, this is what this is how you know it's live, because this stuff is happening. Okay, so that's posted and let me make sure it's live on the event page for people. Um, this is like the most janky thing that could ever happen. Oh, okay, oh, it's on the event page. All right, so, so hopefully people will get it that way. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, what are you doing? We're trying to, no. trying to make this thing work for y'all. All right, so. Anything else that you want to add about your process or, or, or any, you know, tips for people who are just getting started with the whole copywriting deal or wanting to, you know, maybe they can't afford somebody like you, but they, they want to really give it a good try to improve the copy on their websites or you yeah. know, whatever, wherever. Yeah. So here, here's one for people who are starting out or thinking of starting out or whatever. The reason, so I will say before LinkedIn ad rewrites, before that tag, before that approach, uh, things were okay, but mediocre, but absolutely nothing has turned around business for me like LinkedIn ad rewrites. And I'm working with a couple actually sales teams and things right now on how to create something similar. And what I think is most important, when people are starting, you don't have a portfolio, right? Everyone asks, what's your portfolio? They want to see a portfolio. You don't have a portfolio. Or I work with a lot of people who are not launched yet, so I don't can't share that portfolio. Uh, mm. So what I have told people to do is you don't need to be paid to start a portfolio. You can start a portfolio anytime you want with anything you want, but you want as you're building that portfolio for it to work for you, right? I just don't want to make a bunch of things and then put them in a closet. So if anybody ever asks, I have them, right? That's a waste of everybody's time. So the reason that LinkedIn ad rewrites works and what I'm coaching other people on is when you do your portfolio, you wanna get as real as possible. So I plug Abby Wilson like left and right because she does amazing stuff. She does website, uh, she does live website reviews, similar to my LinkedIn ad rewrites. I don't know if you're connected with her, but you should check them out because she does them on video and they're really good. But then okay. she also will redo websites that we all know. So I, she did some drink, it wasn't Dasani, it might've been Dasani, but it was something like that, like bottled water or something. And she does a side-by-side -side rewrite. And I have to imagine that she gets good business out of it. But again, it's because she doesn't create an abstract thing that nobody knows. She doesn't make like a fake pet shop or something. She attacks like, all right, here, we're going to take Coke and I'm going to redo your website. Like it's a power move because you're, you're challenging, right? The big player. Here's something right. everybody knows and you're getting real. So the real, the reason LinkedIn ad rewrites do well is because they're real ads posted by real companies in real time that they have paid actual money, too much of it in my opinion, to put up Especially on. Especially if it's a LinkedIn ad. Oh my gosh. 
So, so the point of attacking them, it's so much more real and powerful than if I was just sitting there spouting random copywriting tips all day, right? So, so build your portfolio, but when you do it, make it real. Like if you're applying for a job at a company, redo something of that company. So you don't want to offend people. You have to be careful how you do it. But that, I mean, that's my biggest advice. I'm, I'm working with a company who does, uh, I will say, customer experience work. And I'm like, you need to call the person that you're reaching out to and make them go through their own customer experience. Go through mm. their customer experience. Make them go through it. And then your sales pitch is that much stronger. It's kind of the same thing with, with LinkedIn ad rewrites, with marketing, with whatever you're doing. Try to make it as real as possible, down and dirty, and it will do the absolute best uh, as far as performance and you know getting, getting uh, jobs coming in and things like that. So. Cool. And, ju and just speaking to that, because I mean, LinkedIn ad rewrite, re eh, I can't talk. LinkedIn ad rewrites has, is definitely a phenomenal portfolio. I, I'm a super fan of the series, which is why we're talking. And, and just tell me, like, what was business like before and what is business like now? Business before was, um, uh, it was a lot more of me reaching out to people, a lot more of me prospecting, a lot more of me um trying i've always liked inbound better but it was it was you know friends and relatives and connections who knew me kind of recommending other people to me and that kind of thing which is fine um for me it's a side gig so it was actually enough to you know enough to be okay uh since doing linkedin ad rewrites i get anywhere between two and six inbound a week um, of people who want to work with me uh and the other thing that i love is i've I've made it intentionally a little bit difficult. Uh, you know, once the process is rolling, everything's fine. I hit deadlines and all that fun stuff. But I made onboarding, like I want someone else to do the extra work to connect with me because I want to know that they actually do want to engage. They actually do want to do things. They actually care about the project they're launching. And it's made the, a world of difference. Because when you're outbound and you're hunting people down, you're chasing people all the time. And half the right. time, they don't even want to talk to you. If you get them to come to you, it's so much easier on every level. I I totally agree. And and you know, the fact that this campaign, I guess you could call it a campaign, has had such a strong response has has this like changed your view of content marketing at all? I always believed in it. Uh it's just it's always been hard to, you know, strike the right nerve. That's the art of it. And then a lot of people will reach out too and say well, how do you, you know, how do you hit that right nerve, for example, like it's a switch? And it's really the sad thing is you don't want to give the impression that it's easy because it's not. It takes a lot of tries and a lot of failures. And then you finally grab something that ends up working. Um, so, yeah, so I've always believed in it. Uh, I think some people view content marketing as marketing just making stuff. And making stuff doesn't work, right? You have to make the right stuff. <laughs> That's right. The, you got to make key. it with the, the word that everybody keeps using these days is intentional. You got to be intentional. Um, but it's true. Like, I, I mean, I'm not a guy who who likes cliches. I actually hate them whenever I hear somebody using a term, you know, yeah. ad nauseum. It grinds my gears. But uh, oh, OK, we got a question from the audience and we got a raised up. Oh, I think we had a raised hand. Uh, so Clubhouse, if you want to, this is about questioning time. So Clubhouse, we got a couple people in the room. If you want to come up and ask a question of James while we got him, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand. I'll bring you up to the stage. And we had a question from YouTube from Diego, and he says, what would be the best scenario possible of data for you guys to produce uh, a copy that a client could give? That's I'm not sure that I understand that question. Yeah, that, that phrasing is a little is a it's little weird possible. for me. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's type of ad or type of. Huh. I'm not sure. Hey, Ariel. Ariel just popped in the hey, clubhouse. Diego, maybe you could clarify. Yeah, Diego, if you could clarify for us, that that would help. Um, what would what would be the best scenario possible with data for you guys to produce this a copy? Did you let, is this the aerial I know? Is this the aerial we all know and love? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I don't have a question. I just wanted to say hey. I was watching on <laughs> YouTube, but I couldn't like comment back. So um, no. I'll just hang out up here. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, where is your air dance dancer outfit? Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, we're not. Police hall. 
<laughs> There's at least the pickle lady. There's a lady who changed her her LinkedIn picture to her wearing a pickle outfit. I believe that would be Elise. Uh, I told her I should take one with it. I bought an air dancer outfit. It's like eight feet tall and it's got hair on top and all that stuff and it's inflatable. I told her I, I should compete with her pickle outfit. Although there's no way I can overdo the pickle outfit. I mean, that kind of wins with an air dancer outfit. But I didn't bring it here because the fan noise would probably mess with it. Gotcha. Audio. Do you have do you have like a, a window open or something on your computer? Because I'm getting a little bit of echo. Oh. I don't think so. I don't hear an echo. All right. Well, we'll we'll just deal with it. Um, any it other- sounds okay on Clubhouse. Alex, just so you know. Okay, thanks, Brian. Brian's still here. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been hanging out on stage the out. whole time. So he's <laughs> just man, he's man. just been all the goodness. Yeah, he's just been. You know, up here. Yeah, so if if you could see that my screen's too bright, so I was trying to I was going to try to be fancy and have a clubhouse window on here too, but I couldn't get it worked out in time. Next time we'll make it happen. I'm just glad this whole thing is working. So we got, we got clubhouse here. We got LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn is not working, but that's not my fault. Um, Lisa you know, had a I, real question. I'm going to take this one. She said, what was the inspiration for LinkedIn ad rewrites? Um, this was a, so, so loop up, there's a company called loop up and they launched an ad that said they had cloud telephony. Tel- tel- cloud to what? So telephony. Like putting your phone on the cloud, like your phone oh. system on the cloud. And I scrolled past this ad like freaking 400 times. And I said, I'm <laughs> done with it. I'm so annoyed because I don't even, like nobody says tel- tel- telephony. Telephony? Anyway, I don't know. So I rewrote yeah. it. All I remember is the first line is uh, your phone system, what is it? Your employees aren't in your building, so why is your phone system? Uh-huh. So like, just because, well, like what? I'm trying to think of the motivation of why, what does cloud phone mean? What does it mean if my phone's in the cloud? What is that? So I looked it up and the benefits are like, you can have your personal, you can, you can have your business phone ring your personal phone. So like, I don't need to carry two phones. You can use one phone. It can bounce to my business voicemail. It can like, so I looked for the benefits and then kind of rewrote that one. And that one turned into, uh, that one turned into somebody called me right away out of the UK and in nice. cloud phone systems. And he's like, help me with this. So interesting stats really quick, just in case, because I've had these questions. Uh, I have not seen to date anyone actually change their LinkedIn ad text at all. So when I rewrite it, they're usually good, positive feedback. Not one person has I seen change it. I've had a few of the companies that I have uh, messed with, like, respond. So, like, Drift was one of them that comes to me. Uh, I think there was one called, like, Thought Industries. They have commented on it or liked it themselves um, or had other people comment on it. One lady said, like, you have a job. And I'm like, do I? And then she never responded. Uh, but I find most of the opportunities come from other other companies that kind of reach out after seeing me do one. So it is kind of funny. I don't usually get them about the target itself. I usually get them from other people, other companies. Nice. Um, let's see. Diego, I think he tried to clarify for yeah. us. He said, age, genre, time on page, professional layout, and other made it metadata from a blogger audience to increase the effectiveness of copywriting. Oh, so do you use any of those things to inke- increase the any of those data points to try to increase or tailor your copywriting and increase its effectiveness? Yeah, a lot of times I'm doing B2B, not B2C, so it kind of matters less, if that makes sense. Because it's like I'm not, you know, I did some B2C stuff. We were aiming for like younger kids and things like that. And if anything, I took my platform. So like I did TikTok and, you know, did a lot more on TikTok and a lot more on Instagram because I had a consumer product that sold better there. Uh, But with a lot of this, you know, profession obviously makes sense. Um, But it's kind of, when it comes to B2B websites, it's it's a little more cut and dry. I want to find more what is the target roles. So I'm doing one now. There's, I'm doing a couple now that have a tech influence, like a technology influence, a buyer influence, and a manager influence. And so it's like you kind of build, we've made separate pages for those because like the manager does not understand the tech. But also I need the tech to be able to sell the manager. So it's kind of like I I use those personas more than anything, more than age and gender and things like that. 
Okay, I get that. So wh where are you going with this? Like, what is there? Is there an end in sight for LinkedIn ad rewrites? Or is there a goal that you're trying to hit? Like, is there a finish line? Or is this just something you're going to do as long as you have the inspiration? Uh, it's working. <laughs> so I don't really, as long as companies keep like paying for really crappy ads, then I guess I have business. This is another good point. You want to find content and make content that kind of rewrites itself right? That feeds you inspiration. How do you get your inspiration every day? If you have to come up with ideas every day, it's taxing. But luckily, a lot of people are paying me, literally indirectly paying me to re because they're, they're paying LinkedIn for crappy ads, which are just fodder, right? That I can rewrite. Um, so I don't have a specific um, end in mind. Again, what I'm doing is, is working and I'm enjoying it and it's fun and people seem to react to it and like it. So I have no, I have no reason to stop. Um, there is a, there is an, an there's a funny comment from Elise, who is the pickle lady. Uh, she asked if I've ever had anyone take it negatively uh, and reached out and told me to stop or called me out. I've had a lot of people claim that they could rewrite it better. I've had some people rewrite better in the comments, like not from the direct company. I love it because I love seeing their rewrites. Like I think creativity is like beauty in the world. Right. There's no limit. Nobody has more than anybody else or whatever. There's there's an infinite basket, right? So if somebody's gonna rewrite and they can do it better than me, like I'm cheering them on. I'm not angry, I'm cheering them on. Uh, Plus, probably, I, I believe competition breeds innovation, right? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe maybe, maybe you could find another copywriter and y'all could do like an ad rewrite challenge where, where you each rewrite the ad and like maybe, maybe uh, do you have LinkedIn Live? I think this would be something interesting. Maybe this is a strategy you can employ down the line. Like you each, you each target an ad, you rewrite the copy, and then y'all re reveal your new copy to each other live on a LinkedIn live stream, and oh, you get cool. people. And, and then, and then after you do that, you put up a poll and you get people to vote on whose Ooh. rewrite was better. That'd be sweet. The other one I want to do, I want to do one that shows the whole process because I, I'm afraid. It might be misleading, like to make it look like because I, yeah, I turn them out a day, whatever they take maybe a half hour up to 10. Some are quicker, some take longer. But I feel like people think I can turn it around easily, and it's not always the case. Like a lot of times, there's a cutting room floor, like totally. There is a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of things that don't work. Ads are ads that I start on and I give up on because, well, this is way too complex, or, you know, I don't even understand what this company does. Um, there's, I'd never want to give the impression that it's something I can just switch on. It's like wicked easy for me. It, it might look that way, but there's, there's a lot more than that. So I thought about doing a live where I do one live and someone can Ooh. see like the frustration that goes into it. Um, and I might do that someday, but it could take anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours. So I don't know who said through that. Uh Oh, Diego just said copy war season one is on. <laughs> I yeah. think the people want it. I think the people want it, man. That would be pretty cool. There is, there's, there have been some people who've continuously challenged. I had one guy last week say he was going to write one. It was like Friday. He's like, I don't like this one. I'm going to rewrite one Monday. And then he came back on Monday and he's like, nah, I couldn't do anything better. You win, which was cool. <laughs> but if, if realistically, if I could write it better than anybody else in the world, that we all have a problem, right? So there, there are some <laughs> absolutely brilliant people out there. Um, and, when I get mentioned alongside them or something, it makes me a little heart happy. So, cool. Well, for let me just reset the room for the people who are on uh, Clubhouse. So, and or refresh the room as we like to say in some of my other I Clubhouse was say rooms. Andy would be upset. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I I have been chastised. But uh, let me refresh the room. This is copywriting that doesn't suck and makes money. We're talking with James Lorraine, an absolutely fabulous copywriter that my friend Brian, who was on stage with me, put me on to a few weeks ago. And he did a post last week that absolutely blew me away. And I just had to do this live interview to expose more people to him, to what copywriting can do. And um, if anybody in the room wants to come up on stage and ask James a question live, because we are streaming on YouTube right now, as well as being on Clubhouse. And we're supposed to be on LinkedIn Live, but LinkedIn Live is acting janky today. Uh, so I had to go put my YouTube Live link onto LinkedIn and you know, maybe some, actually, let me check on that and see if anybody on LinkedIn has 
put a post or a question there. I don't know. Like, this is so, I, I'm so disappointed. Like, <laughs> LinkedIn, <laughs> you failed me today. No. Alex, I do have a question, but I, I did want to um, point out that if you want to like instantly improve your LinkedIn profile, all you have to do is go back and look at one of Jim's uh, posts about how to improve your headline. And he gives you like three or four steps to do it. Uh, I changed mine. Now my headline says basically uh, I help companies avoid using big words. And then he has some other steps on how to do that. But um, I highly, highly recommend anybody go check out that post and maybe Alex, you can, you can uh, get it in there in the comments or something like that because it was awesome and I implemented it right away. And then Jim gave a whole bunch of comments underneath it. So I highly recommend reading all the comments underneath it. Your LinkedIn post profile will be instantly better for it. Nice. There we go. That's, that's a live on air testimonial. I'll take it. That one, just to elaborate really quick. Uh, there's a trend going on. It wasn't TikTok a little bit ago, maybe like last week because everything changes by the day over there. Uh, and it was tell me what you do without telling me what you do. And basically, if you first step, first section of your headline, say what you do without telling me what you do. So mine says I can explain high tech to my mom. Uh, I've been told that that is ageist and sexist, but on my mom. Anyway, she's a wonderful lady, by the way. Uh, so, so that is the first piece. Uh, and then the second piece, actually say what you do, because just in case your analogy is lost on some people, you actually do want to have what you do. So my second half is tech copywriter for human. Um, so that's how the two pieces go together. But I've helped a few people. Um, if your headline is salesperson for whatever, that just pretty much guarantees that people don't want to connect with you. Also, right. if, you're, if your headline is you know, insurance sales or has anything to do with cryptocurrency, um, people don't want to connect with you. So how can you switch cryptocurrency into like bringing you value for life or something like that, you know? Um, and gotcha. then actually say what you do in the second half. But thanks, Brian. Pretty cool. Yeah, so we we just had a couple more people join the room. If you have been late to the party, this is copywriting that doesn't suck and makes money, where I am interviewing James Lorraine, a fabulous copywriter from LinkedIn, who, well, not LinkedIn, the company, he does his own thing. But he's got a series on LinkedIn called LinkedIn Ad Rewrites that has been catching fire. It's over 300 followers of the hashtag right now, which is actually very, very good for a personal hashtag. That is actually, those are actually amazing numbers. And James has just been breaking down the series for us, telling us about his inspiration and what kind of goes into the mindset of being a stellar copywriter. And he might not think he's a stellar copywriter, but I do because I have been thoroughly impressed with everything that I've been reading and, and the video breakdown that he's done that caught my attention. Um, so if anybody in Clubhouse or on YouTube wants to ask another question, hop up on stage real quick. We are more than welcome for it, but we're only going to be here for a couple more minutes because I told James that this was only going to be a half hour. We have been long. Mm. We have been live for 33 minutes just about. So if anybody wants to get a question out, this is the time to raise your hand, hop up on stage, and we will try to help you out. And I want to know how it. Elise, I want to know how Elise is. Happy being the pickle lady. Like, is the pickle, how do you outdo the pickle lady? I think you're the pickle lady for life now. Oh, nice. <laughs> I had to. I'm a cornball. Oh, you didn't oh, have the second part, though. The second part's my favorite. I know, but I kept it, I wanted to keep it short. Um, <laughs> But anyway, um, James, I just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I know this is not your your usual thing, but I mean, when I see people out there, creatives, working hard, doing things that are innovative, I want to be a part of that. I want to help highlight that. And so that's going to be one of the things that I try to do ongoing when I do these live streams, because um, I'm probably going to take the recording of this and make it an episode on my podcast that I have coming up. Please. Relaun relaunching my podcast this year. Um, it used to be called 1000 Miles, but, and this is the first time I'm telling people this from now on, it's going to be called rebranded. Everything is content because I believe everything can be content and, and can be valuable. If you put it in the right light, take the right position. Oh, we got one more question uh, from Diego. Once he's gone. Hmm. Oh, to do an exercise. So a walkthrough. You know, I'd say 
the second cap that you next year in basketball show next year says, if you do follow the hashtag on LinkedIn, if you go to hashtag LinkedIn ad rewrites, uh, there are, I don't know, a couple dozen actual ad rewrites and then several, five, six, seven videos on there that show that breakdown. So if you want to go check it out, uh, if you're on LinkedIn, literally you type in LinkedIn ad rewrites, just yep. as one word, stuff together uh, in the search bar and it'll bring them all up. Yes, and I recommend you do that. There's so much gold there in those LinkedIn ad rewrites. Like I, I really didn't understand the power of copywriting until I could see those rewrites side by side and see how much more impactful they were to me. Uh, you know, after looking at the original copy. So I think we're going to wrap it up right about there. We have been live for 35 minutes. One more time, I want to thank James Lorraine of the series LinkedIn Ad Rewrites for agreeing to be my guest today. This has been awesome for me. And we attempted the simulcast on YouTube, Clubhouse, and LinkedIn at the same time, but LinkedIn didn't want to play nice. So I had to put the YouTube link up and so some people will hopefully see it. Uh, but once again, James, thank you for this. Everybody who attended on Clubhouse, Brian, Ariel, Layla, Chris, Ralph, James, there's been some other people who popped in and out whose names I wasn't able to get. Um, thank you all for humoring me and showing up for this. I really appreciate it. And this is actually also the first uh, room on Clubhouse that I have created. So Ooh, we, yeah, we, we did a whole nice. bunch of we did a whole bunch of firsts today. So and, and hopefully next time LinkedIn will cooperate and actually put my live stream up. You even put them on the banner, LinkedIn live. I know, you right? They down. got top billing. They got top billing. What's going on here? Yeah, but, ever since Microsoft took over. There we go. It's all down <laughs> Oh, let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'll just say thank you one more time, and thank you to everybody who was in the audience. I think at the top of it we had – eight people watching live on YouTube. We've had a bunch of different people come through on Clubhouse. And once again, LinkedIn, you just, <laughs> we'll you put just a recording up there. You drop the ball. Yeah, we'll put the recording up there. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you, James. I'm sure I'll see you in the feed again. And, you know, maybe some DMs will go flying back and forth. But this has been copywriting that doesn't suck and makes money because James copywriting doesn't suck and he makes money. <laughs> Everybody have a good day.